Uh, okay. Well, I think um, as we talked about on the conference call yesterday, Tennessee's a, obviously a really good football team, doing a lot of things well. Um, very explosive offensively. Um, probably as explosive as anybody we've seen in a while. And um, you know, sound on defense as you would expect with Mike and Dean. Um, you know, and the good players they have there. And um, so, be a big challenge for us here. Um, you know, it's a um, great opportunity here to, um, you know, to advance. And this is what, it's what we work for all year. So, I think we're um, ready to go. Be ready to go. We're not ready yet, but we'll be ready to go. And you know, I think our team has a good attitude this morning. And we'll have a good week of practice and be ready to, be ready to let it go Saturday night. But these guys are tough. They um, are really they're a well-balanced team. Had a lot of success in the last two thirds of the season. I can see why. How tough is AJ Brown once he gets the ball? As a He's runner, really tough. Yeah, hard guy to tackle. He's fast, strong. Um, it's quick and open field. He's they get him the ball in space, and he takes those ten yarders and turns them into sixty-yard touchdowns. He's really good. Uh, Bill, curious your thoughts of uh, Ryan Tannehill and the, his deep ball and their big playability there. Yeah, he he throws a good deep ball. He throws a lot of intermediate routes. They have a lot of catch and run plays too. So, I mean, a lot of their big plays are not eighty-yard bombs, but he's throwing the ball very accurately and um, making great decisions. Is, is this one of the more efficient offenses you've seen in a while too? Certainly on a yards per play basis. They're very good. Yeah, they're very good. Bill, getting back to uh, Tannehill, it, it, have you seen improvement in his game this year? I mean, obviously you saw him quite a bit over the previous five or six years. Yeah, I thought he played well in Miami. But he's playing very well. Bill, this is another somewhat Tannehill-related question. I think through week six, they were 19th in red zone offense. And overall, at the end of the season, they were number one. What did you see from them in, in, inside the 20th? What makes them so difficult to stop, in particular, in the red zone? Yeah, I mean, honestly, they're not in the red area that much. Um, they score from way out a lot. So, uh, but when they do get in the red area, they're they're good. They they run it and they throw it, and ball gets spread around pretty good. There's no just one guy that they're throwing to. Uh, they they do a good job of getting the ball to everybody, and and they have obviously the best running game in the league. So. You combine those two things, and a quarterback, you know, a quarterback can move down there too. So, um, but honestly, they've skipped over the red area a lot. I mean, for the amount of scoring they've had, the amount of plays, you know, it's 16 games, it's not a lot of red area plays. Coach, uh, how would you describe their offensive scheme, and is it like anything that you guys have faced this year or in recent years at all? Yeah, well, we practiced against them for a week, so I don't know how you get a better look at it than that. <clears throat> Bill, um, in the players showing a good attitude this morning, what are the things you look for as the head coach to um, gauge the attitude that you're? Well, they've been working on Tennessee, so. They, they know what we're talking about. They ask good questions. They've, they've been, they've always spent time watching. Bill, you mentioned the practice back in August, the joint practices, as well as the preseason game. What stood out to you about the team then, and, and how have they grown off of that since? Yeah, well, again, the big focus, you know, for us was us, and the big focus for them was them. I mean, it wasn't a, you know, match up a scheme and all that. It was just trying to get your team ready to play for the regular season, but. It was good to work against them. We've seen plenty of ourselves all through the spring, and so that was good. But you know, both teams have evolved a lot. And again, we weren't really scheming against each other. We were just doing what we do to try to improve our basic fundamentals and techniques. That's what that was for, and I feel like we accomplished that. But you know, you can't help but see what they're doing on the other side of the ball. That's what you're. That's what you're practicing against. So I mean, I, I wouldn't compare that offense to something else, and we. And we sat there and watched it for, you know, basically four days. Uh, 
What stands out to you from Logan Ryan's play as you study the Titans? Um, yeah, very productive. Uh, Logan's had a really good year. He um, does a little bit of everything. You know, they blitz him some, some man zone, blitz zone. Um, he's very good on disguise. You know, all the things that, that he's always done well. Um, he has good hands, you know, made a good play on the ball like he did in a um, uh, preseason game against us. So he's a smart, instinctive player. He's had a really good year. Right, one of the better stars we've seen all or, you know, nickelbacks we've seen all year. Playing very well. Uh, Bill, <coughs> excuse me. How have you seen um, Joe Judge either progress or just fully handle his role adding wide receivers this year now that you've obviously worked with him and he's been in that role for a full season? Yeah, Tommy Joe's done a great job. Um, it's done a great job with the kicking game. And um, as you said, he's expanded the the role a little bit and you know that's kind of had a little bit of a ripple effect in the way we've organized the kicking game but that's all worked out you know pretty efficiently and Joe's done a good job of uh, organizing that as well as taking on some some other things with uh, the offense and particularly receivers so he's done a, a good job he's an excellent coach Bill you noted Logan uh, pressuring the quarterback we saw that last year in the game they've gotten a lot of sack production from their secondary the last couple of years how aggressive are they, or do they just pick their spots, or do they blitz those guys pretty frequently? Yeah, they mix it up. They mix it up. So they, they blitz secondary players, they blitz linebackers, um, and then they fake up there and don't blitz anybody. So they, they do a good job. Dean and Mike do a very good job of keeping the offense off balance with a variety of um, what they do defensively. So they're not, they're not very predictable, and they, they give you a lot of different looks, but it's all things that they're pretty – uh, familiar with and they play well. It's, it's not like, a, you know, a couple blitzes the week and then each week and it's a bunch of new stuff every week. That's that's not really their their main thing, that they have a good plan, a good package, and they they have a good variety in it. They mix them up. They keep you honest. If you're looking for one thing over here, you could be getting something else over there and vice versa. And, um, and they kind of make them look the same and, you know, make you figure it out after the snap. And if you guess wrong, then they – like you said, they've got a lot of sack production out of their DBs. Um, they don't bring them all the time, but they bring them enough where you got to worry about it. And if you're watching the wrong one, um, somebody else will get you. So that's that's good. They do a good job. Bill, you mentioned Logan Ryan smarts. How does his intelligence show up on film? And obviously, you know how prepared he was in this building. Do you have to, uh, I guess, account for that when you're going up against a player that, that you know how well he prepares? Yeah, you certainly don't want to try to make it easy on them. I mean, it's hard enough as it is. So, yeah, you don't, I don't think you want to do things that you think this is the way he's going to play it. I don't think you want to see if he's going to play it well, you know, or either figure something else out or maybe stay away from that. You know, decide, you know, pick your spots on what you want to, how you want to attack it. I mean, that's really true of every player, but. Uh, yeah, certainly we have a lot of respect for him, and, and he's been very productive. And, and, you know, he knows us well and knows our receivers well and our offense well. So, it's, um, you know, we'll have, to, we'll have to do a good job on him. You know, Byard's another guy that gets his hands on a lot of balls, and uh, he's a very instinctive guy and just, you know, shows up, shows up around the ball. So, you know, those two guys in particular really stood out in their production. Uh, Bill, on Rex Burkhead, what have you seen from him the last few games statistically? He's had some of his better games of the year. Yeah, Rex has been a solid player for us. I mean, he, he does a lot of things well. I mean, plays in the kicking game, plays on all four downs, catches the ball, blocks, runs, gets tough yards, can make plays out in space. Um, you know, I think he's always been like that. You know, he's had good opportunities and maybe had a little more production, but, you know, whenever he's had opportunities, he's been productive for us. Uh, Bill, I, I, b I believe you met with A.J. Brown prior to the draft. I think he came here for a visit. Just what do you remember about him um, from that visit and what sort of stuck out to you about him in that pre-draft process? Yeah, I mean, impressive. You know, very, I mean, look, there's, there's great receivers down there, um, the receivers and the tight ends. Uh, so they had a real uh, explosive group, you know, and he was a big part of it. So, uh, yeah, it was impressive. And he's obviously done, done well. Um, 
you know, really that when we practiced against him, I think that was about the first time he was getting on the field. I don't think he'd done a whole lot before that. And then, you know, we saw him out there on those those couple of days of practice and um, and kind of, you know, gradually through the course of the year, you know, it's hard not to notice him. He's made so many explosive and big plays, but yeah, he's he's a tough guy to handle. He's big and he's fast, good with the ball in his hands, you know, smart kid. They move him around. He does a lot of different things. Uh, he has an extensive um, route tree and um, you know, it looks like there's obviously a great chemistry between him and Tannehill. And, you know, they've been very productive together. Bill, um, Chase Winovich has been pretty productive this season. And uh, you, you've spoken about how deep you can play your defense with so many players on the field. He's been one of them. What, what's allowed that um, maybe on the field, off the field? What have you seen from him progress this year? Yeah, Chase works hard. Um, he's he's a really hardworking kid. Uh, Football is important to him. He, he's very attentive when you correct him and give him coaching points. He tries to do everything exactly the way you want him to do it. Um, and he's improved a lot. Um, but he's you know got good talent. I mean, he's big. He's fast. Uh, he's smart. He's got good quickness. You know, he can handle himself in space, and he has good in-line power. So he does a lot of things well. Final question. How hard is it to mimic Derrick Henry's like size, speed, and even physicalness in practice? Yeah, pretty much impossible. I mean, there's not a lot of guys like him in the league. So, you know, we, um, you know, we've got some experience against him, but that's and that's a little little helpful, I would say. But you know, in the end, you watch him on film, and you know, you, you see what is the way his running style is, and he has a good variation of runs. I mean, he can he can make you miss in space. He can drop his pads and run with power and run over you. Um, he's a good inside runner, good outside runner, and catches the ball well. And he's got speed to go the distance, so I mean, he doesn't get caught much. He he gets a step and then he's able to finish it off. He's got a good stiff arm. Uh, he breaks a lot of tackles in the secondary from guys that just can't you know just can't get close enough to wrap him up. He just pushes them away. So yeah, I mean it's hard to simulate all that, but you know, we'll do the best we can. What makes their uh, play action passing game so effective? They seem to be hitting it on all cylinders with that. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, when you lead a league in rushing, that's that's a good place to start. Um, but, you know, the quarterback makes good, quick decisions, and the receivers are um, they're big targets. And those kids are, are big, and, you know, they've come inside and, and made some big plays. They made some big plays outside, too, and down the field. So. You know, they make their passes and their runs look the same. It's hard for the defense to recognize the difference. And, you know, if they just get a step on you, um, you know, Tannehill's done a good job of sticking the ball in there in some tight spaces and, you know, before the defense can recover all those play actions and hit them. So it's really just good execution all the way around. You know, the running game helps the passing game and good execution in the passing game always helps the passing game. Good quarterbacking. Um, and the receivers take in 10-yard plays and turn them into 50 yards. So it's just a lot of guys doing a good job. Okay. All right. Thanks.